Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new, my name is Courtney. Welcome. If you are returning, thank you all so much again for your continued support. By the title, you see that I will be reacting to Star Trek Season 1, Episodes 5, 6, and 7 in this video. Thank you all so much for those of you over on Patreon who are supporting, and a special shout out to those of you who have military affiliation. Thank you all so much for your service. It is greatly appreciated. Now, let's get into the reaction. What is that? <laughs> At night, it gets down to 120 degrees below zero. Oh my gosh. I'm anemic. That would do me in. Get back to the ship. Report to the sick bay. Yes, sir. Oh, gosh. What's wrong with it? Hmm, that was odd. Some kind of yellow war. I acted like a burnout. Maybe it was the yellow ore causing issues. Just one moment, Captain. Oh, are they going to be stuck down there? If so, okay, no. Oh, never mind. That stuff did something to the machine, didn't it? Captain. Yeah, something's not right. Are you all right, Captain? It's all right. Wait a minute. How does someone get beamed up without him being there? Now, you know what? What the heck? Oh, this is about to be a good one, isn't it? A duplicate of me, some strange alter ego. This is a pretty big ship, so I can just smell the chaos. Sorry, I'm Brandy. The hand's much better, sir. What can I do for you, Jim? I said give me the brandy! So is that like his different, how do I say this? The nice side of him and then the mean side of him. Yeah. Oh gosh, what are you about to do? So they can just barge into other people's rooms just willingly? Dr. McCoy seemed to think that I should check on you. Well, our good doctor said that you were acting like... Odd. Weird. Man. Yeah, that. <laughs> our good doctor's been putting you on again. We beamed up this animal and... Well, look for yourself. <laughs> oh, there's two of it now. It's an opposite. One gentle. Mm -hmm. this one mean and fierce all right how long is it going to take you to put two and two together if this should happen to a man uh-huh oh my yes oh i like that oh let me focus you should not be in here bro your peripheral vision is terrible can i help you captain jim will do it here janet not the first name basis. Oh, the true feelings are about to come out, but not in the proper fashion. Stop pretending. Come mm -mm. here. Just don't fight. The disrespect. Oh! Girl, if you don't slap him, knee him, and punch him, I know he's the captain, but girl, all that goes out the window. There you go, girl, scratch. Deck 12, section. I about to say, it does, now's not the time to be super formal. Just get the word out. I've been resting here since you left me. Alone, Mr. Spock. I found this bottle in Yeoman Rand's quarters. Let's find out what's going on. You know what's going on. Y'all listen to the report from Scotty. Now, what room are you in now? Ah, uh -huh. you're in his room. Well, your room, his room. Y'all get what I'm trying to say. You mentioned the feelings we've been hiding. You started talking about us. Us? He is the captain. I had to fight you. Scratch your face. Look at me. Look, this is hard for her. Are there any scratches? I'm sure I scratched you. I was in my room. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. It was you, sir. Uh, this is messy. Yes. I know what I'm saying. Go now, Yeoman. Or you could keep her there safe while y'all search for the alter ego. Only one logical answer. Yes. Come on, Mr. Spock. We have an imposter aboard. You shall do. When Fisher came up, his suit was covered with a soft yellow ore. But we don't dare bring up the landing party. It might be duplicated like this animal. That's way too much to deal with. The surface temperature of that planet goes down to 120 degrees below zero at night. Y'all, can't y'all just search for the duplicate before he does some other damage? Search parties, Mr. Spock, organized search parties. Yeah. The men are to be armed, but the phase is locked. There can't be any chance of him being killed. How should we explain it to them, Captain? You could just be honest. Tell them what happened. 
There you go. Now, sure, weirder things have happened to y'all at this point. You haven't the right to be vulnerable in the eyes of the crew. If you do, they lose faith. Yes, I do know that, Mr. Spark. What I don't know is why I forgot that just now. Side effects? If you see me slipping again, your orders are to tell me. Somehow, in being duplicated, I have lost my strength of will. I was wondering why this was taking him so long to come up with a plan. Lana looks exactly like me and is pretending to be me. Utmost caution is to be observed. The imposter may be identified by scratches on his face. All hand phasers must be set on base cycle. I'm the imposter is not to be injured. Oh, yeah, William Shatner had a good time with this one. <laughs> I'm Could you be any louder? I was just about to make a joke. Watch him find some makeup. Blend, you got any setting spray? Wilson! Sir? Wilson, give me your phaser. Oh, boy. How's it going down there, Mr. Zulu? We're cold. It's already 20 degrees below zero. Can't y'all beam down? Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Transporter technician Wilson found injured near the captain's cabin. Perhaps we can outguess him by determining his next move. Where would you go to elude a mass search? The lower levels. The engineering deck. Mr. Spock is pretty smart. Oh boy, he is in there. Got to keep your head on a swivel. And I have to remember the duplicate has a phaser too. Yep. Holding it at the ready. Mm. Oh, the makeup's worn off. She's sweating so much. You can't hurt me. I'm part of you. Mr. Spock is about to come around the corner, isn't he? Yeah, you, he was about to take you out. What's the matter with me? You've been split in two. You're rapidly losing the power of decision. Or to examine, in Earth terms, the roles of good and evil in a man. His negative side, which you call hostility, and his positive side, which Earth people express as compassion. We see here indications that it is his negative side which makes him strong. Your negative side, the power of command, begins to elude you. If your power of command continues to weaken, you'll soon be unable to function as captain. Do you think you might be able to find a long rope somewhere and lower us down a pot of hot coffee? I'll see what we can do. The transporter unit ionizer. Nothing much left of it, so we can't repair it in less than a week. Oh, wow. That's, um, innovative. Any possibility of getting us back aboard before the skiing season opens down here? We'll have to hold on a little longer. Survival procedures, Mr. Sulu. Uh. Just had to tranquilize him again? He's not dying. Yes, he is. Help me. So if he dies, what happens to him? How can I survive without him? I don't know, Jim. Here's my hand. You don't have to be afraid. I won't let go. Jim, he is back. But did he drain some of his energy doing that? I can't survive without him. I don't want to take him back. He's like an animal. We all have our darker side. We need mm -hmm. it. Not really ugly. It's human. Human. Exactly. Yes, human. Without the negative side, you wouldn't be the cat. Your strength of command lies mostly in him. The intelligence, the logic, it appears your half has most of that. We think we may have found an answer. Yeah, I still don't trust your little tail. I suggest we send the animal through. I'll grab him by the scruff of the neck and hold him as long as I can. <laughs> Feisty little thing, aren't you? Uh, if this doesn't work, I don't know what will. So how do you know if it worked or not? Reverse. Ah, that's what you're doing. So, are we good to go? Shot putting him back together seems to have been too much for him. Oh dear. He's dead, Is he... yeah. No. Well, geez. Autopsy in depth. Hurry. The animal was terrified. You have your intelligence controlling your fear. Get the transporter room ready. Do an autopsy and let Spock check out the transporter circuits again. Sounds reasonable. He's agreeing to everything and not making decisions. Your men on the planet's surface, how much time do they have left? I keep forgetting about them myself. Jim, you can't risk your life on a theory. I have a human half, you see, as well as an alien half. I survive it because my intelligence wins out over both. But again, it's still just a theory. Somebody made the decision. Yeah, he can't make this decision. Mr. Spock, ready the transporter room. Continue the autopsy. I feel bad for Captain Kirk. This is a lot. Okay, maybe if they talk to each other, they can figure something out. Wishful thinking? Somebody's dead. Watch. Can last much longer to bed unconscious. What about the other guy? Go through the transporter, both of us. 
Shouldn't you have backup to make sure he doesn't do anything crazy? I won't fight you anymore. I feel so weak. Glad when this is over. I don't believe that. Yep. It's literally like thinking your evil twin is just gonna be good all of a sudden. The transporter malfunctioned. The animal part of me came to your cabin. He even scratched me to make us look more alike. You don't mind if I come to your cabin, lady? Yes, I mind. Prepare to leave orbit, Mr. Carl. They can't be saved. Prepare to leave orbit. But I thought we'd plan to change my mind. Go back to your station, Mr. Spock. <sighs> Mr. Spock, you know who I am. You know what that is. You let the captain handle this. He wants you to think that he's Captain Kirk. Yeah, but the real Captain Kirk was being timid. You were being aggressive. Don't you understand? I'm coming to the ship. <laughs> See, now they definitely know. I'll tell you. Can half a man live? You know the step, you'll die. Well, he took another one. I don't want to. Don't make me. You'll die either way, dude. Well, not. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. I want to live. You will. I want to live. If this doesn't work, you're captain now. Understood, Captain. Well, Mr. Spock. I'm gonna say, calm down, Bones. Well, we're gonna get there. Give it a minute. Get those men aboard fast. All right, we're back in business. I'm gonna be very surprised if they're all still alive. Your exposure, frostbite. I think they'll make it. Oh, well, that's good. I've seen a part of myself no man should ever see. Thank you, Mr. Spock, from both of us. The imposter told me what happened. Oh? Who he really was. Well, sir, what I'd like to say is that... Thank you, Yoma. The uh, imposter had some interesting qualities, wouldn't you say? Yoma? <laughs> Helmsman, steady as she goes. All right, friends, that was Star Trek, the original series, season one, episode, what number are we on? Five. Uh, the Enemy Within. I thought that was actually a very interesting episode. I understand the dilemma throughout the entire show i mean you get one part of captain kirk that's like the fun sweet loving kind of i don't want to say timid but you know that side of him and then you got like the violent stubborn lustful side of him as well and i like how you know they pointed out that we all have that within us and it's kind of like i found it interesting that captain kirk said like was talking about you know meeting that side of himself but it's a side of everybody that we all don't like to really acknowledge you know you might like put on this i don't want to say like mask all the time of like how you want the world to see you but honey we all got it in us we all do but eh, when it all splits into two like that and you gotta like face it head on that can be a little bit difficult so understood what they were doing here i kept forgetting about the men that were on the planet i i honestly kept forgetting about that until they would bring it up uh <laughs> i just kept thinking oh crap we have people down there and it's gonna get 120 degrees below zero and they're probably gonna freeze to death the fact that all of them supposedly all made it that was actually pretty impressive. I, uh, you know, they had to take a risk. They had to take a risk and they had to see if it would work to get Captain Kirk completely back together. And I did like the part in the um, episode where Mr. Spock got Captain Kirk to kind of like, because that other side of him is a part of him. So it's like, what would you do in this situation? How do we find you? Like, where would you go? I like the fact that that was brought up because yes, it was an imposter, but it was also again him. So that made a lot of sense that he had to think like, okay, what would I do in this situation? I would go here and then they found him and all that was really neat. So overall, like I said, I really like this episode and now we're going to scoot on over into the next one. The USS Enterprise in pursuit of an unidentified vessel. Earth ship, Mr. Spock? He knows we're after him, all right. I've tried all frequencies, sir. He refuses to answer. Hey, Miss Lady. Approaching an asteroid belt, Captain. He'll try to lose us in them. He's drifting into asteroid belt, Captain. I guess he doesn't know they're following him? Cover him with our deflector screen, Mr. Farrell. They're overloading, Captain. Engine temperature's climbing. Our deflector screen's weakening, sir. We can't protect them much longer. Ooh, well, that's not good. That was one of our lithium crystal signals, sir. Nothing to lock onto. Are they doing that to y'all, or...? 
Well, that's an interesting outfit. No. The name, gentlemen, is Walsh. Captain Leo Walsh. I'm with the three of them will be in position right about by now. Based off the title of this, I'm guessing the other people who are coming on board are going to be some women? There she goes. The one in the green? <laughs> the way she turned and looked. Kirk to transporter room. Report. Bones, stay with it. It's an illusion. It's a trick. Don't fall for it, men. Are you reading me or not, Mr. Scott? Snap out of it, gentlemen. Do your jobs. That fella sounded a might upset in Jesus. Bones. Oh, no, that's everyone, all right. Don't believe you. I have so many questions, but we're just going to pay attention. Ah, well, then, a pretty face doesn't affect you at all, does it? That was very telling. The whole pretty face doesn't affect you. He's so used to buying and selling people. I'll handle the... Oh, so this is what we're doing. Are those three women really aliens? Hello. See, they glowing too much. Mm-mm. Is this your crew, Captain? This is me cargo. Mr. Walsh, I'm convening a ship's hearing on your action. You can feel their eyes when they look at you. I noticed. How oh, I noticed. One lithium crystal left and that with a hairline split at the base. Of course. How are you? And don't submit to a med... <laughs> that is... Give him a medical exam. We don't have a ship and we're headed the wrong way, Harry. Le Leo. I was about to say, yeah, that's... that's didn't he say his name was something else? He gave a fake name. Mm-hmm. He's a con artist. There's a lithium mining operation on Rigel 12. What was that, a lie detector? Leo Francis Walsh. Incorrect. Mm-hmm. Harry Mudd. Incorrect. Harcourt Fenton Mudd. Gentlemen, I'm simply an honest businessman. No, you're not. Smuggling, suspended, trance something. You were charged with galaxy travel without a flight plan and the failure to answer a starship signal. Untrue? I have a master's ticket. Incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> I had no choice but to take out the ship my own self, did I? Well, I... Don't y'all fall for that. Wiving settlers. You do what? Wiving I settlers. recruit wives for settlers. Data on witnesses. No. Data. Unusual reading on male board members. High respiration Ooh. pattern. <laughs> Heartbeat rapid. Do you see, gentlemen, just as I told you, to be the companions of lonely men. Companions? A wife, a home. I've devoted my whole life to it. Incorrect. He's lying. There you go. <laughs> it's the same story for all of us, Captain. No men hooked in. Fine, Evie, fine. No, it's not fine. Why is he trying to get him to shut up? Do you have any defense to offer? Only heaven's own truth, which I've just given you. Incorrect. <laughs> now what's going on? Last crystal, sir, is gone. Girls, do you still want husbands? Hmm? I'll get you a man who can buy you a whole planet. Yeah, he's a whole con. May I come in? I would tell Bones to stay strong, but I feel like he's not gonna. Would you walk past my panel again, please? Your what? The panel on the wall, ma'am. It's not supposed to do that. This doesn't make any sense. If she was, or they were all told, no medical exams or whatever, why would she go to the sick bay? Captain? Wait a minute, hold on now. Don't mind. Oh, we mind. Okay, he might not in this moment. Thank you, Mr. McKeown. I do. Okay, he doesn't mind. Just... <laughs> <laughs> so much responsibility every minute. And... Keep your hands to yourself. Yeah, they're just so touchy feely unnecessarily. Do, do, do you better not get to, to put them lips away. I just can't go through with it. I hate this whole thing. Captain, that would have been your perfect opportunity to say, what are you talking about? The head miner is named Ben Childress. The others are Gossett and Benton. She didn't complete her mission. I don't feel very good. I 
I think it must be near the time. Just hang us in there long enough to get six crystals, Scotty. That's all we need. Did you examine Eve? No. She refused. What are they, Bones? Yeah. What are they? You mean, are they alien illusions? That sort of thing? That's what I was going for. An alien smart enough to pull this would be smart enough to keep my medical scanner from going bleep. This is very true. Rigel 12. Rigel 12. Well, this isn't exactly the Enterprise. What's happening? So, are they just older than... It's a pills. Pills? You'll never find them, Harry. Did she get rid of them? I'm going back to what I was. Ugly. I can't stand myself at least. Oh. Yes, dear. So, is it safe to say that they're just... Older, but they're still human? So if he has a stash of pills, what's going to happen to them once they married or got with whomever? Do they each get their own stash? You want lithium crystals and we've got them. We might prefer a swap. Oh, yep. He got to them. Mud's women? Yep. Oh, and Harry Mud. Either way, I've agreed to have him released. You beam a landing party down and you won't find one blessed crystal. Come along, ladies, come along. Uh, you must be Ben Childress. Sure. Come on now, girls, come on. One thing I'll say for you, Mark, you're not a liar. <laughs> oh, yes, he is. All right, Childress, you won. Now I'll take the lithium crystals. When I have the time, Kurt. Um, excuse you? You can get lost a dozen feet from your own doorstep. Would you like to dance? <laughs> She feels like she's not feeling well. Again. Ooh. Yeah, this is gonna be a problem. And they're just laughing like it's funny. Why don't you just run a raffle and the loser gets me? Eve! Captain Kirk has a good heart. To go out and all of that just to find someone he barely knows. Losing communications with the miners, sir. Sorry, Scotty. See, that's something I like about Captain Kirk. He can say sorry without, as a leader, without someone forcing an apology out of him. Hey, things where I wanted them. I ate some of your food, so I paid with some chores. And I do my own cooking. Ooh, female cooking again. Dude, just eat the food. Mm -hmm. Right, things are better. And let the sand blast it clean. Hadn't you thought about that? You're like, eh, it's worth a shot. Well, what the devil happened to your looks anyway? Thank heaven you found her. The Venus drugs, Harry. Venus. Beauty. Like, Aphrodite. It's not just one of those stories. Oh, it exists. Illegally. What it does is give you more of whatever you have. Men more aggressive, women more feminine. Does that mean the others, they really look like she does? Yes, that's what it means. You don't want wives. You want this. Did she really take it? Is this the kind of wife you want, Ben? Mm. Selfish? Mm. Vain? Here it is. A fake. Pumped up by a drug. By herself. She took no drug. Colored gelatin. Oh. There's only one kind of woman. You either believe in yourself or you don't. I like this twist. The crystals are here. Hmm. And you're welcome to them. But evil stay. Eve. It's up to you, girl. I've got someone up there called the Enterprise. Two of us, Mr. Spark. Come on, Mr. Mudd. Yep, you're not off the hook, buddy. But I will appear as a character witness at your trial. They'll throw away the key. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Sure will. Course plotted and all systems in operation. Out of orbit, sir. A head full. All right, friends. That was the episode Mud's Women. And uh, <laughs> I was not expecting that twist. But that, I, I really like that. It's like, girl, that was a placebo. You, you don't need this stuff, girl. You are beautiful. The way that you are, you are. If you view yourself as beautiful, you are beautiful. Really like that. 
Harry Leo Mud, whatever his name is, child. Yeah, he, this ain't gonna go well for him. This whole trial situation is just not gonna go well for him at all. You already got a record, first and foremost. <clears throat> You're already a con artist. So, I don't know, to be a fly on the wall at that trial, that would be very interesting. So, I really was under the impression that, okay, I was paying attention, guys. I'm not trying to sound weird. I'm not trying to sound like, you know, whatever. But the three women, they weren't like alien mutants, were they? Like, no, they, they really were human. They just, I don't even know how to explain this one, to be perfectly honest with you. I, I, I don't think it went completely over my head, but knowing me, it might have. I just, uh, I was really under the impression that because unless the drugs are what affected the doctor's machine and that's the reason why he really didn't want them to get a medical exam it wasn't because they weren't necessarily human it's just that the exam would have detected the drug in their system maybe that's what it was that could have been it but yeah but i know a bunch of y'all are like super 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 fans and you guys will you know let me know that sort of stuff but you know i thought this was a pretty interesting concept uh, now one question I do have about it is that he made it very clear that those three women weren't the crew. So maybe given the state the ship was in when he got hit by the asteroid, he allowed himself to go first and then brought the women and the crew was, or was there never really a crew? Yeah, who knows? But yes, uh, yep. Yeah. Interesting episode that was, you know, that was pretty cool. Um, is it the best one I've seen so far? You know what? It, it, to me, for me, it's not. But I just, I look. My favorite episode that's happened so far is actually the naked time. <laughs> Sulu with that sword. I just, I that 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 is forever in my memory. But we're gonna keep this going. Uh, I was already prepared. Some of you guys said that certain episodes are hit or miss. It really just depends on how you feel really and how you like the episode. But hey, we're gonna move on to the next one. And I hope you guys, you know, you're sticking with me. And I hope you guys enjoy my reaction to episode seven, which is called, I got pulled up, What Are Little Girls Made Of? So let's see what this is about. We're entering standard orbit, nurse. Oh, it's the nurse from uh, uh, the Naked Time. I know he's alive down there, Captain. It's been five years since his last message. Roger's a very determined man. He's a Roger. If the surface temperature of that planet is 100 degrees below zero. We already went through this two episodes uh, ago. Dr. Corby. I've always wanted to meet him. I've tried all frequencies, sir. No return signal. His last signal told about finding underground caverns. And since then, two expeditions have failed to find him. Come in, Enterprise. Oh, this wow. is Roger Corby. I guess he's still alive then. Can you beam down alone, just yourself? It is an unusual request. That's extremely unusual. You're certain you'd recognize his voice? Have you ever been engaged, Mr. Spock? Oh, that's the fiance. Hello, Roger. Christine. Yes, Roger. Darling, how, where are you? On the Enterprise. We're on our way, Doctor. All right, this is a little bit too optimistic. Those are some short outfits the women get on. <laughs> And I already noticed this before, but I mean, these are short, short. You said he'd be waiting. Is it just his likeness, his spirit, or is it him physically? Beam down, two security men. Now, he did request just one person, and he said two, but now there's four. Matthews, we'll look for Dr. Corby. You accompany us. Oh, no, child. You stay in groups. Something's going to happen to this other security guard. This would be so cruel for her, considering they used to be engaged. And this is all just an illusion. Jeez, man. What's with the spotlight? No, no, ma'am. Check first. Dr. Brown, it's Roger's assistant. Oh, for heaven's sake. There's no hope, Captain. It's bottomless. Bottomless? Split. What the heck is that? Is that Roger? I should have called that foreshadowing when she almost fell. Terribly unfortunate. You don't mean that. Don't you recognize me? Christine. You do know him well. An old friend? I suppose living here for five years. Any problems there, sir? We lost Matthews. Apparently an accident. Tell the Enterprise to have a full 
Security party standing by. And yep, got him. As their sun dim, the inhabitants of this planet moved underground. Doctor Corby has. How long have y'all been walking? Now who is this? I'm Andrea. Hi. You must be Christine, and you must be Captain Kirk of the Starship Enterprise. I don't remember Doctor Corby mentioning an Andrea. Where is Doctor Corby? Here, yeah, Captain. Here I am thinking Roger mutated into that thing we saw. Oh, well then, I mean, hey, got the fiance, they are engaged. Uh, all right. Captain lost a man in the caverns, Doctor. He lost two. <laughs> Perhaps if I'd been there, I, I know the passages so well. It wasn't your. Mm -hmm. Captain, I'd much prefer. Raven, are you receiving I'd me? I'm waited, Captain. No communications, Captain. <laughs> yep, I knew that this was. Roger, that man. He won't be harmed, I promise you. Were they trying to protect them from Big Dude? Andrea. If it's one thing Captain Kirk is gonna do once every few episodes, it's drop, tuck, and roll. Yeah, see, that, that, that right there. That, oh my gosh. Oh, he's a... There's so much that just happened. <laughs> Captain Kirk got snatched up like his mama told him, don't touch that, and he touched it anyway. We were becoming concerned, Captain. Your check-in was overdue. Yeah, I'm about to Dr. say. Dr. Corby's records and specimens will require careful packing. If you move or cry out, Rock may injure you. Dr. Corby has made some fascinating discoveries. You obviously know of my reputation. Get to the point. Andrea. You must be Captain Kirk of the Starship Enterprise. Christine, it's all right now. Everything is all right. You are not to mock Christine. Or disobey an order from her. You will not disobey her orders. Do you realize the number of discoveries lost because of superstition? Ruck was programmed to protect my experiments. Where is my other crewman? Answer so the Destroy question. Destroy them both. I had a feeling, because we didn't see him fall, and so he pushed him. I was left here by the old ones. With the records I could find, we built Brown. You've convinced me that you're dangerous. <laughs> I'm sorry, but the way Kirk's getting manhandled. Is she an android too? Why are you unhappy? You are with Roger again. You are concerned about the captain? Yes, I'm concerned. You will call me a Dr. Corby from now on, Andrea. Now, who exactly is she, though? I need time to explain and demonstrate. Yes, let's start with Andrea. Yes, let's. I'm like Dr. Brown, an android. I figured. Notice the, the lifelike pigmentation. But are you an android, sir? It's been five years. Is Ruck, Ruck, Rook, Ruck, is he the mastermind? You think I could love a machine? Did you? Andre is incapable of that. She simply obeys orders. Kiss, uh, Captain Kirk. Does Captain, has, has he given consent? What in the heck? Now strike him. No emotional involvement. She simply responds to orders. How many people did William Shatner kiss in this? And perform only as you program. And why did Brown try to shoot me? Why did he kill two of my men? All important questions. Are those security people? This is how you make an android. Is that? Hey. Roger, what happened to you? A lot can happen in five years. Tara, I will be so sick on that thing. The older I've gotten, the more motion sick I've become. Captain Kirk already had to deal with his duplicate. Now he gotta deal with this. Choose, Christine. Which is your captain? I don't know. I was gonna say the one that probably looks upset. You now make a mental pattern. The android will be so perfect, you can even replace the captain. On your own business, Mr. Spock. Wait, Sing what? Your half and read it Meet an android. How do you do, Miss Chapman? Now programmed to please you also. <laughs> I was like, which one are you? I'm more or less on parole, I understand. I think that's the android. He came in too formal. What he's done may seem wrong, but he is Roger Corby. If I gave you a direct order to betray him... Don't ask me to make that choice. Please, go ahead and eat. He's not eating. Androids don't eat, Miss Chapman. I knew it. He's an exact duplicate? In every detail. Tell me about Sam. George Samuel Kirk, your brother. Only you call him Sam. Well, they did do the memory circuit thing. What you saw was only a machine. By continuing the process, I could have transferred you, your very consciousness, into that android. What? So, like, you could never die? A human being can have practical immortality. Mm-hmm. But the same old promises made by Genghis Khan, Julius Caesar, Hitler, Ferris. 
that part. Can you imagine how life could be improved? No one need ever die again. I'm offering you a practical habit. I wouldn't even want that. We need transportation to a planet colony. The proper raw materials. Begin producing androids carefully, selectively. They must be strongly infiltrated into society. You've created your own, Kirk. Why do you need me? I created him to impress you. I wouldn't believe that. I still think he's an android, though. <coughs> Roger! I was like, Roger, nothing, girl. Your fiance crazy. Rock! Something tells me that bottomless pit's gonna come in handy. Rock! I order you not to harm him! This probably a secondary command, like, listen to me before you listen to her. And he's around the corner. Uh-huh. Maybe. Oh, nope. He's right there. Smart on Buck's part. Routine, is that you? Never mind. Oh boy, is that the pit? Technically, he could get rid of you since y'all already got your android, Captain Kirk. Oh, he's gonna help him up. That's definitely the android. Finish the head of schedule. Dr. Kobe has considerable cargo to beam aboard. Mind your own business, Mr. Spock. I'm sick of but your half-breed like interference. Him. <sighs> not half-breed. I'll beam up shortly with Dr. Corby and party. Yeah, Mr. Spock is like, uh-uh, something right. Security Spock here, status of your landing party. Have the meet me in the transporter room after the captain has beamed down. I think you'll find planet minus five an excellent choice. Kiss me. repetitive actions or maybe I'm just reading into this too much I'm not programmed for you the matter Andrea confused yeah I think she is there's a little bit of human consciousness in there uh, what in the <laughs> what happened to the old ones Ruck? so long ago you remember the ones who made us they grew fearful of us they began to turn us off. Unlike you, we humans are full of unpredictable emotions. You are inconsistent. You cannot be programmed. You are inferior. The danger to you is Corby. I was programmed by Corby. The old ones programmed you too, but it became possible to destroy them. You can't protect someone who's trying to destroy you. You brought the inferior ones. Oh, so you bring the evil back. Rock, stop. This about to get interesting. <laughs> Did he just destroy him? Completely? <laughs> yep, I knew it. It's still me, Christine. No, it's not. I'm in here. Nope. I was frozen. My legs were gone. I had only my brain between life and death. This can be repaired. I'm still the same as I was before, Christine. No, you're not. Are you, Roger? Ma'am. Someone in the outer junction. Spock. Must have got my message. Get a weapon. Deal with it. I will kiss you. No, it is illogical. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Freed himself and I destroyed. Destroyed him. I listened to your instructions. Bade them as stated. Is this your perfect world? Killing off one another. Mm-hmm. I'm not a computer. Ask me to solve any. Transmit. Yeah. That's what things computers do. Does this make such a difference? Yeah. Everything you've done has proved it isn't you. Mm -hmm. I am Roger Corby! Give me that phaser gun. If there's any human left on you, give it to me. I constructed a perfect being. I thought he froze for a second. You cannot love. You're not human. Kiss. Okay, I'm about to say. I was like, either she's gonna take herself out or they're both gonna get taken out. In here, Spock. Dr. Corby. Has been gone for a long time. Was never here. Thank you for letting me make the decision, Captain. She's staying with the ship. Yeah, I was rather dismayed by your use of the term half-breed. Must admit, it is an unsophisticated expression. Extremely. Steady as we go, Helm. All right, friends, I have a matter of minutes to finish this up before everything practically shuts down on me. I've been recording for like three hours straight. So out of the three episodes, I feel that this one was actually my favorite. I just really liked the concept of this one quite a lot. 
that Christine's fiance had been missing for five years. I was not expecting the character of Ruck to be imitating everyone's voices. That was actually really interesting to see. Um, I did catch on to the fact that Ruck was the reason why that one security guard just like fell. I mean, it was good foreshadowing with Christine almost falling, but you know, it was really, really good. Yeah, I, I called it that uh, the doctor was an android. I mean, it, it just, it made a lot of sense that he was, um, what was her name? Andrea, she, or Andrea, I think it was Andrea. She, you know, obviously she was an android. Ruck was an android. The process of turning Captain Kirk into one, that was a little bit comical. I know I didn't like laugh or anything, but just watching William Shatner spin, <laughs> that was interesting. And again, Mr. Spock is pretty much always on it, I've noticed. Uh, he was probably like, Captain Kirk never says that. What the heck? And he was able to put like two and two together. Really, really like that. Uh, I thought the speed and the pacing of the episode was really good. Uh, for, especially for this one and I don't know I just I just thought that this was a really interesting concept and um, the whole making the perfect human beings we're, we're not supposed to be perfect like we're supposed to have all these emotions we're supposed to have these different sides of us like that's what makes us human that's what makes us who we are and 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 androids being humans they just don't have those emotions so those are my last thoughts on that. I know that was really quick and super sped through, but I hope that you guys enjoyed the reactions to these three episodes. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you guys know whenever I upload, and I will see you guys in my next reaction video. Bye.